Moving on, this is Lisa Garber out of naturalsociety.com. Chinese pharma companies accused of selling pills made from dead babies. A South Korean SBS TV documentary accused Chinese pharmaceutical companies of selling, quote, stamina pills that contain ground up dead babies. The report claims that certain hospitals and abortion clinics sell baby corpses to the companies who then use their bodies to grind up for their stamina pill ingredients. The team ran a DNA test and found that the pills were 99.7% human. They were even able to tell the gender of the baby. Let's go to this clip. South Korea reports seizing thousands of smuggled drug capsules containing an unusual added ingredient, the powdered flesh from dead babies. Some people believe they can cure disease. The Korea Customs Service says they were made in northeastern China from babies whose bodies were chopped into small pieces and dried on stoves before being turned into powder. So basically the Chinese medical system is handing over the corpses of these stillborn and aborted babies. And of course, the, uh, the system of forced abortion in China is enforced by, you know, gangs of thugs literally kidnapping women off the streets, driving them to the hospital, forcing to have their babies chemically boiled within the womb and destroyed. So they're getting these aborted babies, because we've had stories in the past about you know, aborted fetus just thrown in a bucket and shoved in the corner of the room. They've also got what they call dying rooms, which are babies that are left abandoned by the parents. They just chuck them in a room, lead them to dehydrate and starve to death with no care whatsoever. This is the glorious communist system. Um, so they're getting all these babies' corpses, all these fetuses, sending them to pharmaceutical companies who are literally just burning them, grinding them up, putting them in pills, selling them on the foreign market. It's absolutely sick, disgusting. But is it, you know, really any surprise from a country that still kills tigers so they can use the mythical tiger penis in their traditional medicine? I mean, this is not the first we've heard of this kind of thing, but now it's escalated even further where they're doing it with dead babies. Quote, the Daily Mail says the Chinese officials likely know about the trade and have attempted interrupting it, but ethnic Koreans from China smuggling the capsules to South Korea were thwarting their efforts. But of course, the real scandal here, which is ignored, is the fact that a plethora of Western companies um, are using cells derived from aborted fetuses to develop their products, mainly cosmetic items. Of course, we covered the Pepsi story here a few months ago, but also Neural Stem, Reneuron, Merck, GlaxoSmithKline, Senomix Limited, and Neocutis Incorporated. All these companies and more besides use cells from aborted fetuses in their products. So it's not just coming out of China, it's coming out of major pharmaceutical and cosmetic companies here in the West. And after coming to that understanding that they're using dead babies, fetuses ground up in their products, would you be really comfortable in buying and using them? Moving on, CBS Baltimore reports, some thought massive power outage in Annapolis marked end of the world. And that's right, we've reached the end of the Mayan calendar and we're all still here we're alive, we're going, it's October, it's December 21st, 2012, nobody's dead, Planet X didn't come and kill us, there were no massive tsunamis, no massive pole shifts, we're all still here, everything's fine. As we said all along, it was a massive distraction, and thank God it's finally over. A massive power outage in Annapolis still has many people talking Friday morning. That's because it created a light show across the sky. Some were wondering, is it the end of the world? So basically this transformer malfunctioned. It created a light show in the sky. Power was cut across the uh, region. And according to this report, a lot of people left comments on social media fearing that this was the beginning, the early beginning, because it actually occurred on Thursday night, of Armageddon itself. But finally, we've got past this ridiculous Mayan calendar distraction you know, the world hasn't come to an end. There's been no major spiritual shift, no rebirth of humanity, as far as I can tell. 
Uh, it feels pretty much the same as it did yesterday, which is not to say, you know, that the world as we know it is not coming to an end. It just seems to be doing so at a very much more gradual fashion, which is, you know, precisely the point, because the very real environmental, sociological, economic threats to life as we know it, things like genetic engineering, chemtrails, you know, unstable nuclear power plants, the fact that 43% of the children in Fukushima have thyroid abnormalities, the financial meltdown, the, you know, the increasing erosion of morality and basic decency in developed countries, the increasing degeneracy of pop culture, and of course, the, the evisceration of our rights with the Second Amendment in key focus this week. So all these things are very real and immediate threats, yet none of them are the subject of salacious, you know, Discovery Channel specials and endless media gossip, because they actually exist. They're real threats that we all face. And they're not the distraction that the 2012 doomsday prophecies, which thankfully for now are over, have proven to be. Quote of the day tonight on InfoWars Nightly News comes from William Butler Yates. He said, quote, education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. So a lesson there for all the gun grabbers who are now advocating indoctrination of school kids against gun rights at the educational level. Just want to remind you to subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. Just been redesigned. It's all slick, fresh, and new. The um, 39.95 price for the Christmas season is in effect. You can get 12 months for the lower price. It supports everything we do, keeps us going, and it's prisonplanet.tv. That's going to wrap it up for the news here tonight on the show. Stay tuned, though. After the break, Aaron Dykes interviews Charlotte Isaby, author of Deliberate Dumbing Down of America. Stay tuned. And now, a special Christmas message from the Federal Reserve. This Christmas, the Federal Reserve would like to wish all of our slaves a very merry quantitative easing for. Our current chair, Ben Bernanke, has perfected the art of giving money to foreign banks for many years, as seen in this rare home movie. Ben is currently giving these banks 85 billion per month. Excellent work, Ben, once again. This is the Federal Reserve, wishing you and yours a very merry quantitative easing for, and we hope to destroy your economy in the new year. <laughs> 